in my small apartment in New York City, cluttered with half-finished paintings. I lived a life filled with routine. My days were spent juggling part-time jobs and organizing small art exhibits that few people attended. My artwork, full of expression and emotion, failed to capture the attention it deserved in the city's vibrant, competitive art scene. One evening, while the city was drenched in rain, I walked through the streets, seeking inspiration. The damp environment, with the reflections of city lights on the wet pavements, led me to Galleria Mardina. There, I stumbled upon the opening of an exhibition by Sophia Bennett, an artist whose name I recognized but I knew little about. The gallery was crowded with art enthusiasts and critics. Amid this gathering, Sophia Bennett stood out. Her paintings, bold and colorful, adorned the walls. Sophia herself exuded confidence and a sense of mystery that captivated me. Her art and persona struck a chord, embodying the success and recognition that I longed for. Later that night, back in my apartment, I couldn't stop thinking about Sophia and her art. I spent hours online researching her life, her interviews, and her rise in the art world. Every new detail I learned about her added to my growing interest. In the following weeks, my art began to change. Without fully realizing it, I started incorporating elements of Sophia's style into my own paintings. My use of color became bolder and my forms more abstract echoing her style but still retaining my essence. This change in my art style began to attract attention. People noticed my work at a small exhibit in a local coffee shop. Critics and art enthusiasts saw a new vibrancy in my paintings, reminiscent of Sophia Bennett's style but also uniquely mine. The recognition I received from my art was thrilling. It was the first time my work had been appreciated to this extent. This acclaim deepened my fascination with Sophia. I connected to her, almost as if our destinies were linked. I was aware that this was the start of a journey that would change my identity and my perception of reality. My obsession with Sophia Bennett grew stronger and began to influence every part of my life. I changed my hair color to match Sophia's vibrant auburn. This change was just the beginning of a complete transformation. I also started shopping for clothes that mirrored Sophia's unique style, which was both elegant and bohemian. Additionally, I began using the same red lipstick she was known for, practicing until I perfected the look. A change in my behavior accompanied this alteration in my appearance. I found myself emulating Sophia's mannerisms and her demeanor. This wasn't just an external transformation, I felt different inside more confident and poised, much like how I perceive Sophia to be. My art also started to reflect these changes. I spent many hours studying Sophia's technique, examining her use of color and brushstrokes. As a result, my paintings began to closely resemble her style. It felt like I was not just imitating her art, but somehow channeling her artistic essence. My work took on a new intensity and complexity, echoing the captivating nature of Sophia's art. My friends and families noticed these changes. At first, they supported my newfound confidence and the attention my art was receiving. However, they soon became concerned. They pointed out that I was losing my own identity, transforming into someone else. Despite their worries, I was convinced this metamorphosis was necessary for my artistic success. Driven by my obsession, I started to frequent places Sophie was known to visit. I went to the same restaurants and art galleries she frequented, and I attended the art events where she might be present. I believed that immersing myself in Sophia's world would unlock the secret to my success and recognition. This phase of my life felt… surreal. I was no longer just Emma Langley the struggling artist. I was transforming into a reflection of Sophia Bennett. I lived in a world that blurred the lines between admiration and obsession. My journey to emulate Sophia Bennett led me to a significant turning point. 
infiltrating her exclusive social circle. I began using my newfound confidence to integrate into her social circle. I spent my days attending gallery openings, upscale parties, and art auctions. I was always observing, learning how to blend in with the elite. My conversations were now filled with references to Sophia's work and the art scene, which intrigued those around me and helped me enter their circle. At one of these high society events, I overheard a conversation that changed everything. The topic was a secret within the art community. Sophia had a twin sister, Isabella, who had disappeared many years ago under mysterious circumstances. This news struck me deeply, and I became obsessed with learning everything about Isabella. I spent my nights searching the internet, reading old newspaper articles, blog posts and interviews, trying to piece together her life and disappearance. The more I learned about Isabella, the more I felt an unsettling connection to her. I began to believe that I was not just emulating Sophia, but was in fact a reincarnation of Isabella, meant to fill the void left by her disappearance. This belief transformed me, further pushing my identity as Emma Langley into the ground. My art started to reflect this change. I began incorporating elements that I believe represented Isabella, making my paintings darker and more mysterious. I also changed my dress style to what I imagine Isabella would have liked, moving away from Sophia's style and creating a blend of the two sisters. In the eyes of the art community, I was still Emma Langley, an artist resembling Sophia Bennett. But, in my mind, I was no longer Emma. I had become an embodiment of Isabella, living in tandem with Sophia. This belief was a point of no return for me leading me towards a reality that I could no longer recognize as my own. Believing I was the reincarnation of Sophia Bennett's lost twin sister, Isabella, I fully embraced this new identity. I convinced myself that I was completing the destiny of the Bennett twins. My presence became familiar in the elite art circles, and I was no longer questioned at high-profile art events. I befriended those close to Sophia, gathering detailed information about her life and using it to shape my behavior and my appearance. People who had known me as Emma Langley started seeing me as different. I adopted behaviors and speech patterns that were like Sophia's. My art transformed significantly. It now combined my style with what I imagined were the qualities of Sophia and Isabella. This change was not just in my art. It extended on how I dressed and carried myself too. I combined Sophia's style with what I thought Isabella would wear, creating a blend of their identities. I was seen as an emerging artist, closely connected to Sophia Bennett in the art community. However, in my mind, I was not just emulating Sophia anymore. I believed I was a vessel for Isabella's soul, meant to merge the lives of the separated twins. This belief had led to a complete loss of my original identity. I had become a mix of both Sophia and the Isabella that I imagined. My reality had shifted to a blend of what was real and what I imagined. My artwork reflected this new perception, showcasing a fusion of the real and the imagined. I had fully accepted my identity as Isabella, detaching myself from my past life as Emma Langley. I was setting myself up for an inevitable confrontation deeply entrenched in my new identity. I was unaware of the potential consequences of this path, fully absorbed in the world that I had created for myself. At the gallery event, I publicly accused Sophia of being responsible for her twin sister Isabella's disappearance. Sophia's response, revealing Isabella's accidental death, overwhelmed me. My constructed reality, based on being Isabella reincarnated, shattered with this revelation. Concerned about my mental state, my friends intervened, leading to my admission to a psychiatric facility. The facility was quiet and sterile, a sharp contrast to the chaotic world of art and imagination that I'd been living in. In this new environment, I found an odd comfort in painting. However, the art I created continued Sophia's style, not mine. Each brushstroke represented my confusion 
and the loss of my identity. My world had become confined to the canvas, painting in a style that no longer reflected who I used to be. Meanwhile, the confrontation deeply affected Sophia. She was shaken by encountering someone so lost in an identity closely mirrored her own. This incident prompted her to introspect. Sophia began questioning the foundation of her fame and the persona that she had created for the public. She realized the impact her image could have on others. Sophia started withdrawing from public life, returning from the art world she once dominated. She began confronting the truths hidden behind her art. The glamour of fame, once her driving force, now seemed hollow after witnessing my breakdown. This period became a time of introspection and re-evaluation for Sophia. She wrestled with the feelings of guilt and responsibility for my situation. Sophia questioned how much her life was a performance and how much her identity was a facade for the world. Our encounter made her reflect on the essence of her life as an artist and as a public figure. In the psychiatric facility, I was in a room filled with sunlight. I painted, feeling both familiar and unfamiliar with each brushstroke. Sophia Bennett's style influenced my paintings, but they also showed my emotions. They represented the struggle in my mind. While dealing with her unresolved issues and her past encounter, Sophia decided to visit me. She felt nervous and inevitable as she walked through the facility. When she saw the paintings in my room, she was impacted by their intensity and emotions, reflecting her hidden feelings. Then, Sophia started to paint with me. The room was quiet. Only her brushes on the canvas could be heard. As we painted together, it was hard to tell where her influence ended and mine began. Our paintings blended different styles and emotions, showing our connection. This moment in the room ended our story, leaving an open space for thought. I continued to paint, possibly finding pieces of my real self in each stroke. Sophia, seeing a reflection of herself in me, started thinking deeply about her own life and identity. <laughs>